What's up, Friday Night Funkiners? From horror games to platformers, let's dive into the bizarre world of FNF spinoff games, aka bootlegs. And let's make it a tier list to spice things up. All right, let's begin with one of the funniest and most well-known FNF bootlegs known as FNF FPS or first person shooter. You chaotically run around town facing off against opponents from weeks one to six. Devil henchmen also appear as normal enemies and you can choose from multiple weapons and even a throwable grenade. Each main opponent plays a, a bit differently and you can pick up blue items to refill your ammo or green items to refill your health. This game came out before Tank Man released in week seven, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that later. For now, FNF FPS lands a dope A rank on the tier list. Next up, let's jump into FNF Run. It's a side-scrolling flappy bird-like game where you have to dodge flying notes. You can also hit them with mics though, but honestly, the hitboxes and everything is kind of jank. The best strategy I found is to just almost never jump and spam mics as efficient as you can. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all to it. In a nutshell, it's pretty solid, so I'll stick it in the middle of C tier. All right, but let's return to some spooky horror shenanigans with FNF Trick or Die. In this game, it's Halloween night and Lemon Demon has captured girlfriend. As boyfriend, you must rescue her from Lemon Demon's house. Uh, he, he owns a house? And you must find three objects to unlock a girlfriend from the basement. You can explore multiple areas, such as the outside, the house itself, upstairs, the basement, and most importantly, the bathroom, which actually holds a key in the toilet and is where I first died from Lemon Demon. He seemingly just teleported through the door. Like, geez, man, at least knock. There are also multiple like safe points that you can hide under from Lemon Demon. And you'll find another key in the trash bin from outside, which then opens a locked door upstairs with a full freaking skeleton, dude. Yet yeah, we'll find another object hidden behind a bookcase in here. And we got to put this battery thing in the basement while avoiding Lemon Daddy. But uh, oh yeah, th there's fall damage. That's right. If you jump just a little too high, you basically break your knees and you'll just crawl forever like sponge glop on a Monday morning. You have five lives, and if you die, you restart the whole 10 minute game over again. But the final object we need is a hammer to knock down the wood on the door in the basement. We can then open it up and rescue girlfriend, but I broke my knees on the way down to the basement. So it was an intense 30 seconds as we yeeted our way out of the house before Lemon Demon, I, I don't know, like slowly asked us about our extended cars insurance or something, I don't know. Anyways, FNF Trick or Die is another solid A tier with a few more flaws than FNF FPS. I feel that the jump scares could be better and Lemon Demon's a, a bit slow. <laughs> Speaking about flaws, or flawlessness rather, let's shoot into Friday Night Duncan, a masterpiece of modern media where boyfriend plays basketball for 20 seconds and then it resets over and over again. The physics are complete jank and literally the best strategy is just to stand there and let the ball hit itself in the loop. <laughs> but this game has a leaderboard and let me tell you, I tried for days trying to beat the world record of 112 points. But one night at 3 a.m., the stars aligned and, <coughs> and I got a perfect score of 112. Yippee! But since I had been playing for so long, the game didn't even register my score. But at least we can say I wasted over an hour of my life getting fake internet points. Let's freaking go, dude. Anyways, this game is a solid B tier. I hate it. All right. Let's move back into the horror realm as we play what's known as Final Funk chapters one and two. Lemon Demon is the antagonist yet again as he's been attacking people in their dreams, literally. We begin in Boyfriend's Wholesome House with one of the funniest starts to a horror game I think I've ever seen. We get a call from Pico and let, let me just play it out for you.
Anyways, we go to sleep, but we're transferred into a nightmare as Lemon Demon says, if you die in your dreams, you die in real life. Also, BF's friends have been somehow transferred into his dreams. I don't know if they're actually real or not, but uh, Pico and Ron are certainly goners from the looks of it. We have to collect eight golden mics scattered throughout the map to win. In chapter one, the main villain is actually Mighty.Zip from the D-Sides FNF mod and he chases you the whole time as a nice little jingle plays when he gets near you. The map is a huge black forest, but honestly it takes only about 10 minutes, and Mighty.Zip never really catches up to you. But once you win and go to chapter two, we're transferred to another nightmare against gold from the Hypnos Lullaby mod though. This is done much better, I think. We still have to collect eight golden mics, but every time you do, Gold gets faster. This boy starts schmoving, and there are some real close calls when you try to get the last mic. Let me tell you. The game itself hasn't been updated in over a year, but I think it has some great potential. So I'm giving it a solid A for atmosphere. Okay, let's jump back into another platformer, quite literally called FNF Platforming. As you play as boyfriend through seven different levels, you can collect coins, shoot lasers, and defeat enemies with a boss at the end of each level. The game, as expected, has a lot of jank though, and unfortunately it kept crashing after World 3, so I could not continue on. But the bosses are pretty cool and they encourage you to use the game's mechanics, yet for most of the game, you can just cheese it by going straight through the dirt and getting lost in your own sauce. The game has some pros and cons, so it's a solid C tier. Yet that leaves us with the final game, FNF FPS 2. In this bomb diggity, schmoove and sauce, tremongous dungus of a sequel, you play as BF in first person this time, with the option of a third person view. It's simply one schmassive level, as BF must save Christmas from the FNF bosses that for some reason want to ruin Christmas. I don't know. We gotta gather 10 mini girlfriends scattered through locations like a post-apocalyptic looking town, a farm area, and a snowy forest. The bosses in this game show up after collecting a mini girlfriend, and they all have new strategies from the first FNF FPS game. Like, for example, Mommy Mirist is now a long range distance demon, while Senpai is a short range nightmare fuel inducing addict. <laughs> After dying dozens of times and finally collecting the 10 girlfriends in the most obscure of places, like really, you even go through a graveyard, a little construction zone, inside houses, and a bathtub. But after all this, we will deliver the girlfriends to uh, girlfriend <laughs> at a windmill in the forest. But just when we think we're safe, out of nowhere, Tankman reveals himself as the true final boss. At this point, so many henchmen spawn. It, it is a total madhouse in this <laughs> in the middle of a snowfield forest area. I don't know. Okay, but once you get Tank Man low on health, that boy will start running and he won't stop as he goes into the walls out of bounds and you cannot hit him. This happened three times and I had to reset the game every time. So it went from an hour long game to speed running this... <laughs> speedrunning this crap in five minutes just to find the best strategy to defeat this boy once and for all. And once we do, we are greeted with a girlfriend that just dabs up and you can finally escape this wacky nightmare. I need to mention though, I love how broken this game can be as an open world experience. You can easily glitch on top of buildings and explore, which is how I got this really cool shot for a thumbnail idea. It's, it's actually beautiful up here, like, Bro, the game nails the balance between comedy and tension and truly excels in an atmosphere that is unrivaled from previous games we've looked at on this list. And for all these reasons, I gotta put FNF FPS in S tier. Also, I can't bring myself to put any of these in D tier because I can tell that every developer genuinely put effort into their projects. That said, I still despise Friday Night Duncan. It's too good. 
Overall, the world of FNF bootlegs is unexpectedly magical and surprisingly ambitious in scale. However, if you'd like to see more nightmare-inducing FNF goodness, you should watch how FNF's largest mod ever stole from a hundred plus artists and is FNF's biggest lost media mystery. All right, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Peace.